Welcome back, friends. If you remember, this is where we left off in the last episode, where we looked at the systems and started the aircraft and get it ready to taxi. So now we will jump into the cockpit because it's loud outside and start to go through the checklist to see what we need to do to taxi to the runway. So at this point we are going to assume that we are cleared by the ATC and we are good to go. Before we go to the checklist and start doing it, I'd like to go through the PFD and MFD one more time. On the PFD, the top section is called FMA, Flight Mode and Insuation, and it will display what all the autopilot mode you are using and what is armed, so on and so forth, that we will discuss when we are cruising or climbing or when we are up in the air. Left side is your speed tape which will display your uh, indicated airspeed. Right side is your altimeter tape or altitude tape, not altimeter, my bad, which will show the, uh, the elevation or the, your alti altitude from sea level based on your barometric pressure. This little guy over here is your um, descend and climb rate indicator so one is 1000, 2000, 4000 per minute climb and descent on the opposite. Down below is your course deviation indicator. You can change its format by this format button. I like to use it like this. It is displaying the nav source. The magenta line tells us that this is a GPS uh, waypoint or flight plan through the FMS and you see the preset VOR1 so that is the radio navigation down below this is going to display the waypoint information here uh, and the direct course to that waypoint is 095 and the waypoint is Lima Charlie Echo 01 and you can cross check that with the legs page Lima Charlie Echo 01 the magenta one is the active leg and it is 1.6 nautical miles away from us. Down below is the terrain and weather radar uh, display. So when you turn on, it is going to display the terrain. When you turn the weather radar on, it is going to display the radar. You can zoom in and zoom out using this guy over here. But we will keep them off for now uh, until we taxi to the runway. Over here, we discussed most of the part. One thing I forgot to explain in the first video is you can set some memories like if... Hold on. I didn't mean to do that, but let's just do the exterior lights and let's turn on the taxi lights too. Just to do that. Get rid of the checklist. And what you can do is lower menu let's say I want the present position is your flight plan so let's say I want to have present position with the weather information on memory one so you can press and hold this button it will store your selection and then let's just open the lower menu and switch to a different uh, one let's say the plan mode and let's turn off the weather so this is the plan mode and one good thing about plan mode is if you go to MFD advanced page you can cycle through the waypoints by hitting this next waypoint button and it will show you the entire flight plan waypoint by waypoint all the way to your destination like so all right and there is no option to go back to your origin and to clear that I think you need to go to the lower menu and go back to the present position which will take you back to normal and you can go back to the plan mode to start over if that's something you want oh it didn't do that okay so let's leave it here and if I press memory one as you see it is bringing my selections and it is taking me to the present position and turning on the weather so this is a very good way of storing some options 
to switch between quickly like let's say if I want my plan mode on memory 3 I can select that and press and hold it so if I go back to memory 1 that's the present position memory 3 is my plan mode and maybe I can set the rows yeah why not rows with the terrain on memory 2 so now I have three different options that I can choose from very quickly and switch between so that's that our taxi lights are turned on let's go back to what we were doing we are we were getting ready to taxi so everything is calculated our performance calculation is done uh, what I haven't done is maybe just go in there one more time take off and next page I'm gonna do an NTI systems on takeoff which will change the V speed so I will send them one more time and then we will turn the NTI systems when we are at the runway so now we are good flight director is on and the altitude selection we haven't done it I'm gonna do it to this altitude then assume that ATC cleared us all the way to 3000 alright so that's set now and we will turn on the nav mode which will display L nav and it will start flashing first to warn you that it's going to be using this navigation mode and I believe now we are ready to taxi so let's bring the checklist back parking brake uh, brakes are applied and hold parking brake is released now check the brakes yep they are looking good I'm just pressing the brakes or you know assuming that they are good this is a simulator so nose wheel steering there is no way to check it physically so we will assume that is checked flight instruments are good and the checklist is complete so we can now start our taxi to runway and that is going to be to runway 09 so we'll do left and then enter the runway so a little bit of power and as she gets moving I can go back to idle and she should keep going with the thrust generated by the engines without increasing the throttle so we are navigating to runway 09 we can take a look at some good passenger views our passengers look like they are happy and I think I am going to use the second exit right there to the runway not this first one so that is my plan and we will hold short at the runway threshold and go through this takeoff before takeoff checklist before entering the runway so let's turn around here uh, this is looking good and we will stop just right here and I'm gonna hold the brakes and do not use the parking brake ice protection system we will turn them on alright that is checked rudder bias system we will assume that it is checked seats are upright and outboard flaps are set speed brakes are 0% yes they are so let's check that too trim is set in fact I can adjust it a little bit more alright and then crew briefing so we can now say take off briefing and I will do the short one long one is really wrong okay crew briefing is done TCAS so TCAS is under tune page this is the TCAS system we will plug in an squawk code 
because we are not using the ATC and we will turn it on to TARA so now that's checked radar so that's the terrain radar we can go to here and select terrain so that is good GA button is this guy which we will push and the battery amps we can push it now what we what this does is this is going to lock the flight director to 10% climb or 10 degree climb I'm sorry and then lock your heading to the uh, runway heading so that is done GA button is hidden here there is no actual one so the working title team put a button behind this uh, black screen or square so that is done battery amps so we can check the electrical system battery amps are about 20 or less I believe yep right there so check that too ice protection systems are on pedostatic heat this you shouldn't turn them at the ramp because after five minutes in real aircraft it will melt the pedo tubes the heat will melt it so you have five minutes to take off after turning them on exterior lights now we can turn on the strobe and landing lights because we are uh, entering the runway and the, this TCAS button is in up at the moment so we can't just change it the, this TCAS was that one TARA we, we did the TCAS mode TARA but this button is not functional so we will leave it alone exterior lights are good ECAS and then the checklist is complete so the takeoff checklist I don't have to, uh, a co-pilot so I will do it before we take off or after we take off so the throttles are going to be full forward to the takeoff detent and one we will check that and make sure it is green um, and then we will release the brakes to do our takeoff run and then we will rotate at the rotate speed which is 97 knots displayed over here so that is the plan so therefore I will line up like so and then stop here and then check everything and leave it at after takeoff and close the checklist page so we are good to go now holding the brakes full throttle M1 is green release the brakes and off we go trying to maintain the center line and we are drifting a little bit for some reason I don't know if it's windy and we passed the V rotate so let's take off so alright we will maintain 10 degree climb we will put the landing gear in and bring the nose down and control the troll ourselves so that we don't overspeed while we are climbing so that is good what we can do now is we can start our turn slowly and we can bring the flaps in while maintaining the altitude and we are getting close to 3000 so we can turn on the autopilot and then we can select the v-speed mode and it will capture the altitude and maintain 3000 for us we will show pull the throttle back to not to overspeed and we are at 3000 so that was a good takeoff we'll turn on the nav mode one more time so that the aircraft will start oh we are overspeeding as I said we shouldn't I will slow us down very fast below 250 this happens when you try to speak and fly at the same time but we are good now so we are maintaining the speed which is good aircraft is turning around now we can do the after takeoff checklist while we are sticking to 3000 
and you can go to the legs page so we will hold 3000 until BPK which is that waypoint over there so landing gear is up flaps are zero throttle is not set to climb because we are not climbing at the moment but we will assume that we will do that when we start to climb your damper is on automatically as soon as you turn on the autopilot autopilot is on ice protection systems are on passenger lights are still on and I'm gonna keep them on a little bit more landing lights they are on pressurization check pressurization pressurization yeah I am having a hard time pronouncing that altimeters are checked so we will hold 3000 unless ATC clears us uh, to a higher altitude we have to maintain 3000 until we pass BPK so the speed is dropping so I will increase the throttle just a little bit to get close to 250 and that's it guys nice takeoff altimeter is checked and then the checklist is complete until the cruise we don't have anything to worry about in terms of the checklist so while we are getting close to BPK let's set our altimeter altitude to let's say 43,000 let's say we cleared all the way to our cruise altitude okay we will assume that and I'm watching the speed until we pass BPK we will start climbing to our cruising altitude and we are going to use the flight level change mode I'm not turning it on at the moment because it will immediately start climbing if I do that and I'm gonna keep the speed around 240 and that's what I want when we are climbing I want the speed to be at uh, roughly around 240-ish during climb all the way to the crease so that is great we are getting close to BPK maintaining the speed at 240 as much as I can I think it is looking good now very cloudy weather in London and we are getting close to BPK we can adjust this a little bit and see it a bit better five miles out and when we pass BPK we will start our climb almost there let's take a look at outside while yeah not the best weather I wanted I wish I had I had selected a different weather than the live weather to take a look at the scenery outside after the update so maybe we will do that in the next flight but we are about to pass BPK now so I believe now we can say okay let's climb flight level change at 240 knots so now the aircraft will start climbing to 43,000 after passing BPK because that 3,000 needs to get cleared before we can start our climb so now throttle to climb and now the aircraft will start climbing and it should keep us below there we go and I'm gonna check that detent to make sure it's at climb yeah it is at climb if we go down you will be able to see it that is the detent that's at climb and I hope the speed brakes are not yeah let's bring the speed brakes I'm not sure why speed brakes turned on but now we are climbing a little bit faster so this aircraft is like a rocket it climbs very fast but it will settle down uh, at a certain uh, climb rate after some time and climb all the way to the cruise alright there is not really much to do inside 
So let's take a look at outside. Beautiful weather. I love the clouds in Microsoft Flight Simulator. They are so realistic. Okay, I think we way past the standard barometric pressure so I will change the barometric pressure to standard because transition altitude was 6000 and we are about to pass 10,000 so what I will do is let's give some panel lighting I will turn off the taxi lights are off we will turn off the landing lights there we go and then we will turn off the safety lights and relieves the passengers if they want to do something different and this is what happens until climb we are going to keep climbing and monitor the systems and make sure everything is looking okay and keep climbing I'm not using VNAV in this aircraft during climb because uh, it's, it's not great and after discussing this in the discord the developer said the avionics systems in this aircraft they suggest not to use VNAV during climb but use flight level change instead with 240 knots on the speed until you crease and then you can use VNAV for descent so that's what the developer is advising and they have a nice video for it's two hour long uh, walks you through from start to the finish uh, I'm trying to do the same thing in multiple videos it's a single video I'll uh, put the link to the description if you guys wanna go and check that out but yeah we are climbing now and there is really not much we can do so I will probably shut up and let you watch a little bit because I want to get up to 29,000 and I will explain why when we get there and we will wrap the video there uh, when we reach 29,000 okay we are getting close to 29,000 and 29,000 is where you want to switch the speed to Mach units from nuts uh, because it is going to do a Mach hold at Mach 0.64 and use that speed for the rest of the climb until the cruise level uh, in the meantime we can go and check some passenger briefings which there are none that we can use at the moment I believe 
Yeah, there is a little bit of turbulence, so maybe, uh, maybe we can play this. There we go. All right, getting close to 28,000. And we are above the clouds now. Looks like. All right. So when we pass 29,000, I will press the knob to switch to Mac units and you will see a Mac hold. 0.64 instead of 240 up there. 28,700, 800, 900, and there we go. Mach hold is active. Now the aircraft will maintain that max speed until the cruise level instead of 240 for after 29,000 feet. Anyway, so this is the climb pace of the flight. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me synchronize the heading. That's something I usually do regularly. We have a very strong crosswind, 85 knots coming from the left behind of the aircraft or rear left of the aircraft pushing us and that's why the aircraft is trying to maintain the course by adjusting the heading to the left to compensate for the wind so i will keep climbing and then reach to the cruise and in the next episode we will discuss a little bit more about the aircraft and what you can do during the cruise until the top of descent and we will talk about planning the descent and all that when we get up there Alright guys, I think this is going to be it for the second episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As I said, let me know in the comments if this is something you like to see in the future. And thanks for being here with me. I will see you in the next video.